Hello and welcome to Beginners Python and Machine Learning. My name is Tim Cummings. Uh, every week we uh, have a look at um, something to do with Python or machine learning. Uh, on the first week of every month we do an absolute beginners class, but uh, this is the second week of the month, so we're going to look at something a little bit more advanced. Um, but it's still a beginners class, so feel free to ask any questions um, to do with Python, uh, no matter how simple. Um, we're not going to be doing any coding tonight, uh, but we'll be using a Python, some Python code. So you'll have a read through and, and see what the code does, and then we'll try to use it. And we use the code to create a virtual printer in um, on your computer so that you can print to it, and it will, uh, just like a, you have a virtual printer that prints to PDFs, we'll have a virtual printer that prints to Excel files. and. Um, so that's that's the plan for tonight. So this is Meetup 110. In the Meetup description I've put a link and also in the YouTube I've put a link uh, to the file uh, that we'll be dealing with. Uh, but also um, it'll be good if you've got uh, Python installed. Um, so an Anaconda should also work but I won't be giving Anaconda instructions tonight, just Python instructions. And um, and also if you could have Git installed, uh, because we're going to pull down all the all the files from the uh, repository. But at the moment we'll just look at one of them, and uh, so I'll open that in a new tab. So this is our Python file, uh, and it's it's the one that we're going to run. So I've put a big long comment at the beginning here explaining what it all does, um, and. Uh, all our tasks that we're going to try to achieve tonight and uh, then when we get down here we get to some code uh, and so we'll look at this code and see how it runs. So the first thing is you want to have git installed um, so I'm assuming you've already done that if you haven't then you might want to pause the video um, download git and install it and then you can uh, continue the video um, and you'll also need Python installed on your computer. So I'm using Python 3.9.5, um, so 3.9.6 is available. Tonight I'll be uh, using code that requires Python 3.8 or later, um, but with a couple of tweaks you can get it running on 3.7 and probably 3.6. Right, so the first uh, task we're going to do is uh, download the uh, repository where we put in all our uh, Python scripts and Jupyter notebooks that we use uh, during this course because um, we're going to uh, analyze them all uh, and produce an Excel spreadsheet that's got all the YouTube URLs in it. So the first thing we want to do after you've installed uh, Git SC, uh, from Git SCM is to open Git Bash. So I click on the start menu, type Git Bash and there it is. And that opens up just here. Okay, now I've um, I like to put all my Git repositories into a folder called GitHub. So let's just make a directory for that. So the command for that's the same as it. So we're in Bash at the moment, um, which has got a slightly different language than uh, your normal command line, but make directory I think is the same. So we make that directory. We change into that directory once again very similar to DOS or Windows command line um, and then we're going to clone that repository and it's probably easier to just copy and paste it from the uh, document And there we are. So you can then change directory into um, session summaries online. I'm going to do that later. Um, if, um, but we'll move on to this next bit where we're creating a virtual environment. So you can do this in um, a Windows command line uh, command prompt or we'll keep going here in Bash because that's where we are at the moment. Um, so in Windows it's just Python to run Python 3. In Mac and Linux you have to type Python 3 
uh, to make sure you're running the um, version 3 of Python. So Python, we're going to run it uh, with dash m, which means uh, run a particular module. And the module we're going to run is the venv uh, module, which is good for creating virtual environments. And we'll just call ours beginners Python and machine learning 110. So a virtual environment is a really good way of isolating what you do in one project from what you do in another project um, because uh, you install all your third-party libraries in there and, and by keeping these virtual environments separate you make sure that you don't have compatibility issues between them. So that'll take a little bit of time um, to create. That's been created. Okay, so now if you're in uh, Windows command line, you'd run uh, that command. Because we're in bash, we actually have to use um, source, so we can just type that. And I'm just using, um, <laughs> okay, and it's not exactly right. So in, in Windows, they don't have a bin directory for binary files, they have a scripts directory, um, but we still have to use source because we're using bash. So I'm doing a sort of a combination of the two and activate and you'll know when your um, virtual environment is active because uh, you'll see the name of the virtual environment before your prompt on the command line so that's how you do it in git bash um, i'm now going to run a windows command prompt and show you how to do it there so cmd So I'll change here, we'll activate the um, virtual environment. So that's in scripts, activate. And once again, we see the name of the virtual environment is now at the beginning of our uh, prompt. And so uh, we know that it's active. Uh, now we need to install, uh, we've only got one thing to install tonight, so um, we can just type it straight on the um, command line. Normally I would get you to have a requirements.txt file so you can store them all there and um, or you could type all the names into the requirements.txt file and then install them in one hit and you've also got a record then of what's been installed. Okay so we've installed XLS X Writer 3.0.1 All right, so let's check it's working. Now to check it works, we're going to need to have two um, command prompts going. So I'll open another one. I'll right click on here and click command prompt. And bring it over onto this window, this screen. I'll put it on the left hand side using uh, Windows left arrow. Uh, we'll get into the same directory. Uh, we'll activate the, the um, virtual environment here as well. So it's um, PPAML scripts activate. Okay. Then we'll change into our Git repository. Uh, into the online sessions and if you have a look in there um, and I don't remember which shell I'm in DIR where um, there's the one we want to use meetup 110 and that'll be available to both so let's change directory on this one as well as so I'm using tab completion to make it a bit easier so I type the first couple of letters then press tab and it fills it out for me Okay, so if you're, um, um, I won't change directories quite yet. If I look, do a dir on this directory, you should see a folder here called bpaml110. So how it's not finding that, um, and if you're not finding that, then you may not have run the command, which is uh, creating the virtual environment. So the command is Python dash module virtual environment 
B P A M L one one zero. Okay, so that'll create the virtual environment, and then the next command uh, will activate it. So uh, you have to spell it the same way in both times. Uh, so um, see if that helps you find find the path. Okay. So now I'm going to change directory into the session summaries. And if we look in session summaries, we can see that there's an online folder. So I'll change directory into that. So now it's going to be easy to run this uh, Python script because it's in the current directory uh, for both. Now if we look at the next thing that we have to do, uh, we have to run this both the server and the client. Now I guess I made a mistake here, I put client first, but you really want to start your server first and um, and then start your client. And what we're we're really trying to do um, is, is run a little client server setup uh, very similar to uh, what they've done on the real Python site. Okay, so LNAS has written or cd dot dot. So cd dot dot will take you up a directory if you're down in the directories. Um, so it looks like to me how it's in the right directory, but uh, yeah. Anyway, let's see how he goes with that. So let's have a look at this web page. So this is um, all about socket programming, and it's quite a good tutorial here on how it all works and um, it explains um, how we do network connections and that all the, the, that's the API of the functions that we have to use and this is really what it looks like so you can see the socket the server has to start first it creates a socket it binds that socket to a port so the port is just a number and you can, only one program on your computer can be bound to any port at a time because your computer is waiting for, can have these connections coming to it, and each connection says which port it wants to bind to, uh, which port it wants to connect to. So the computer will work out which application has bound to that port and send the traffic to it. So we're going to be put binding on port uh, 9100, and, um, and then we'll just be listening there until something happens. Now, then the client program starts up and it creates a socket and it sends the connect across to here where the server is waiting to accept a connection and once it's uh, established that uh, connection then the server can start to receive data from the the client and the client and they send data back to the client so how this happens all these sending and receiving of information that's your protocol that you have to set up between your devices and just make sure that they're they're both expecting to be sending data and receiving data at the right times and you can send messages between them uh, to tell them to, to do different things um, and at the end the the client sends a close message uh, when it receives that it can close the connection and you can have several clients running at different places and all connecting in to the server and you just have to set up your code so it can accept those multiple connections so what we're going to do today is we're setting a virtual printer there will be a server just sitting waiting for stuff to come to it as though it's been printed to it and then that will be um, it will work on what data it gets and uh, and then at the end we can close it and it'll save an Excel spreadsheet for us all right so let's see if we can get a, a little bit um, going they've put some code here in echo server so basically the server receives data and it just sends straight back the data that it receives um, so that's what the server looks like you can see it's doing the things it's doing the bind it's doing the listen it's doing the accept and then with that connection it will um, do the receiving and the sending and it just says while true so that's an infinite loop um, but we've got a break statement in here that'll get us out of the loop and um, this with connection is a um, 
with is a Python keyword and it's used in a lot of um, places so that once the program gets out of the with it automatically closes any resources that were required with that. So you can use widths with things like opening files and reading the contents of a file. Um, here it's used twice, once with the socket and once with the connection. Because you can have one uh, socket and then multiple connections within that socket. Uh, in this case we're just doing one socket, one connection. Alright, so I've got no questions on that so far, so let's uh, let's give it a go. So to run a Python script, we, we type the Python command uh, to start with. In fact, well, let's just check that Python's working. So you can type Python dash dash version and it should give you your version number of Python. Now if your Python isn't working here, uh, well then you wouldn't have been able to create the virtual environment in the first place. But I should just um, uh, help people who are stuck in that situation that they can't install a virtual environment. Um, if Python doesn't start here, then it means that you haven't got the right environment variables. So there's an environment variable called path, and you can see what that is. And it doesn't get in, um, set up by default when you're installing Python, so you have to tick an extra box to make it available from the command line. And it puts in here, it says where the Python is getting installed. So mine is installed in users, Python, app data, local programs, Python, Python 39. And then there's two things there, there's scripts. So how do you edit that if you forgot to tick the checkbox when you uh, were installing Python and, and you didn't do that? So you can go to the start menu and type environment. And there you can edit the system environment variables or the environment variables for your account. So let's do the ones for our account. And that brings up uh, what they are, and it's this path is the one that we want to look at. So if we edit that, that shows us what's on our path. And you can see there, you need to add Python 3.9 scripts and Python 3.9. So those two have to be there. These ones are for other programs, um, and so you might have them or you might not. Now if you need to add them in, you can just, um, you can just say browse. Um, where you want to go. So um, it could be you've installed it in uh, program files, in which case find it in program files. In my case it was in app data, local, programs, Python, Python 3.9. And so you'll want that folder there and say OK. And then you'll want to do the whole thing again and find the scripts folder and say OK. So let's see if we do that folder and say OK. You can see it adds it onto the list here, so that was a bit easier than typing it in. Um, but I don't need it twice in there, so I'll just delete this one. So, um, yeah, Leo asked why the scripts as well. Um, I'm just saying that because they were there. I didn't put them in there, so the, the Python installer has decided that you needed the scripts. So um, that might be things. Let's have a look what's in those folders. Programs. Python, Python 3.9. Yeah, so pip is in the script. So if you want to be able to do your pip install, then you need to um, have that in your path as well. If you don't have that in your path, you could do um, Python dash m pip install, and that's how you run the, the pip module without having the scripts folder in your path. Okay, so now we can type Python and it'll recognize it and we'll put in the name of the uh, script that we want to run. So that's going to meet, meet up 110 and I'll just get to 11 and then I know it's unique. And then we're going to do some command line arguments after it. 
and there I'm going to set the mode dash dash mode and I'm going to do the server so it's all caps server and run so now it's running as a network socket server bound to port 9100 successfully no other app is using this port so that's good and it's listening on that port now in another terminal window let's run it at the same script but run it as a client okay so the client um, received this data is sent this data here hello and then some uh, Unicode and that uh, and then the server sent it back in the reverse order and so the client got it um, so they're the bytes that it got and that decodes back into Unicode of uh, question mark question mark hello uh, spelled backwards and so you see that's what it sent that's what it got back now when um, when I first set up these scripts I thought I'd do something to show you the difference between uh, bytes and characters in a string and so Unicode um, is a really good example of that because Unicode can have um, Unicode can have uh, multiple bytes for a single character and so I thought well I'll choose uh, the Australian flag there's an emoji um, a Unicode character for the, the Australian flag uh, so I went to a website and copied that into my code uh, so where did I get it from I got it from this website and it's it lists a few of them uh, and it also explains how they work um, now when I pasted it in on my Mac this is what it looked like hello and Australian flag so I thought that's great um, but you have to send bytes so it encodes it into UTF-8 um, now Elnaz has asked a question um, s.sendall.encode is in the client part I'll just bring this over so everyone can see it um, yes yeah, so the server is listening the server just waits um, and um, it's the client who actually connects to the server and tells it what to do so the the server is sitting there waiting not doing anything the client sends data and it sends hello flag to to the server and then the server does something with that data and our server is just a simple server all it does is re reverse the characters and uh, sends it back so we can see here on the in um, slack slack is just displaying this code as an Australian flag um, so that's brilliant in our Google here on Windows it's displaying it like that hello HM and there's a funny HM so they're different Unicode characters uh, and I in fact I tried a few Windows programs trying to actually display that and I couldn't find any but um, Elnaz has found slack actually works so that's great uh, so the client sends that data the server rearranges it and then sends it back so in our code here we had the server running on the left it reported that it received this code that's what it received from the client so it reported that um, and it decoded it into Unicode probably correctly just couldn't display it and then it reversed it and sent it back and then the client said ah I got it back in the reverse order so I know that you've you've sent it correctly so that's what's happened here and once the clients then gone one message back it goes that's all I wanted to do it disconnects and in our server we said only receive one message and then you can disconnect as well so it's uh, it's closed itself um, by uh, jumping out of the width connection block and and the whole program script finished so does that make sense
So yeah, it's a server side send it or client side. So the client sends it first, the server receives it, processes it, and sends something back. And that's just, if you look at this diagram here, you can see uh, the client sends, uh, the server receives, then the server can do something, you can go down and send, um, and send something over here, and the client receives, and it can either go back up here or it can say I only wanted to do one thing. And similarly here it can go back and receive some more or it can continue on. Okay. So that's, um, we've written our first uh, little server and client network program. And there's not a lot of code <coughs> required to do it. Um, nothing really interesting there. The 1024 is the number of bytes <coughs> it will receive at a time. But we only sent um, a few bytes, so we didn't, um, we didn't get close to that. Uh, now what was interesting was those flags. I expected to see an Australian flag and then O-L-L-E-H. But <coughs> the Australian flag is not actually a single Unicode character. It's actually, um, so I thought it was a, a single 8-byte Unicode character, but it's in fact two 4-byte Unicode characters. So when um, we reversed the characters, those two 4-byte characters got reversed and the data that came back is actually a different flag uh, when, it, when it displays as a flag. So um, anyway, that's a good example for getting your head around what the difference between characters and bytes are. And I didn't even know that ex there existed these two byte characters, uh, sorry, two character symbols in Unicode. Uh, so I hadn't seen that before. And so I learned something new by doing this exercise. Okay, that's what's next. Yeah, 1024 is a uh, one kilobyte, and you'll often see it written uh, KIB now. And so K without the. Oh, good. Elnaz has, has sent back the flag that she got in return, and uh, you can see it is a different flag. So. I'll just put that on the video. Yeah, so um, KB is often a thousand bytes, and KIB is a thousand and twenty-four bytes, and um, and so that's two to the tenth. So that's often why why you see people using that number, thousand twenty-four rather than a thousand. Okay. All right, so the next bit, we're going to create a uh, generic text-only printer. Um, so here's some instructions in Windows, Windows and how to do it, and some instructions in Mac. Um, <clears throat> so let's give this a go. Uh, in Windows, we'll go into Settings, and Devices, and Printers and I've already got one that I've created but I'll create another one with a different name. So we click add printer and we wait for a little message to come up my printer isn't listed and we'll click on that and that'll bring up a new window which has gone on to my other screen and from that uh, we'll add a printer using a TCP IP address or host name. and we're going to make it a TCP IP device and the name is going to be 127.0.0.1 and the port 9 because I've already got one it's um, it's put a, a, an extra dash one under that underscore one query the printer and I'll turn that off Detecting the TCP IP port. So 
So Windows, what we're doing here is we're setting up a printer that will send something to that particular port. So it's not listening on the port, it's going to send it to the port. So we're going to send data to the, this printer and then the printer is going to look for our virtual printer to actually give it the data. Just like it was a physical printer, it would, it would give the data to it over say a network or um, a USB cable. And this is taking a fair bit of time. Meanwhile, if you're on a Mac, um, you might have to go into the uh, command line and type this command, cups control web interface equals yes. Um, and then you can uh, browse in a web browser uh, with either of these uh, links uh, to start bringing it up. Okay, let's continue on. Device type. Uh, generic network card that's correct and so we want generic generic text only and next use the currently installed driver and that should be currently installed by default and then we'll give it a name so this is where you'd say um, you know print to xlsx I'll call it print to bpaml that'll do and we want to uh, share the printer and we've given it a name so that'll do all right it's asking to print a test page all right so while we've got that up um, let's run our uh, python file and this time we'll do it in motor surfer receive so the first one was a server echo we were echoing back the data in reverse order this time we just want to receive it we don't want to do anything uh, we don't want to send anything back because this printer here is not expecting any data to come back so let's um, run this server receive okay so now we've got our virtual printer running on the on the socket uh, so no, network socket server running on port 9100 and now if I click print a test page because it's just a um, text only printer it sent data as text out to our program and so our programs received all this data across the network and it's printed and you can see uh, I've printed line numbers as the data has come in and up to this point it's printed the first slot and that's the first 1024 bytes and then it's continued on with the next slot and then that's stopped um, because there was only one file uh, and we've said in server receive that we only want to receive one connection and then we're going to quit the program all right how did people go did anyone manage to get uh, a test page to get received in their virtual printer finish that um, is there anything that you want me to go over again um, while I'm waiting for that I will run through uh, what you have to do if you're on a Mac so let's go to here so if we're on a Mac um, we we run the cups interface so let's uh, here we go I've got that I've connected to that so let's move this to a new window so and we've got you go to the administration and at this point you might need to type in your um, super user um, password Okay, so LNAS doesn't have any printer to set up. You don't need, you, you, what we're doing, our Python program is the printer that we're setting up. So that's why um, we can go to this. We, you click add printer or scanner. And even if you've got nothing here and you've got no printers connected to your computer, you can still click on that and it'll search for it. But of course you don't have anything there. 
So then you can click on this. The printer that I want isn't listed. And so you click on that and that's where you'll get this window coming up. And you're going to say add a printer using a TCP IP address or host name because that's how you're going to talk to your Python printer. So we're writing the printer as a virtual printer and you should be able to continue on um, doing that. So does that make sense? I'll leave that just down there. And when you finish setting it up, it'll appear in this list. So I've got one here, print to XLSX. So that's our virtual printer that we've created. Um, and on Mac, we go here, add printer. And we're going to use uh, HP Jet Direct. So HP Jet Direct is the um, protocol that uses port 9100. So, and that's that's what the generic text only printer used by default on Windows. So we'll use the same one on Mac. Okay, so uh, there's our protocol. So the program is going to be running on the same computer. And it's going to be listening to port 9100. Uh, in fact, let's see if we can have the Mac send the data back to our Windows printer. So if you're doing this all on the same computer, use that IP address 127.0.0.1. And I'm going to, for my testing, because I'm just going to be running the Python program on my Windows computer, and it's going to have that IP address. And I'll call that print to XLSX. That'll do, and I don't have to share it. So this is what the instruction I'm following. Add printer, socket, print to XLSX, don't need to share. Continue. Uh, raw. Continue. Raw queue. Add printer. All right, I'm going to cancel this one here unless anyone else needs uh, me to go through that again. Okay, print one Python file to printer and see if it saves it. Um, so that worked. So let's... Um, Let's have a look. Yep. I'm going to run my server again. And then um, I'll do this. I'll try running this from my Mac. So I just have to connect to my Mac. And then I'll go into GitHub, Session Summaries, and Online. Yep, the file's there. But in fact, I didn't need to do that one. I could do um, any one. I could do a Meetup 109, for example. And um, I just need to... In fact, the Python is running here on Windows, so all I'm doing over here is printing. So let's find the, the print command. It's just LP and then dash D for destination, the name of the printer and the file I'm going to print. So it's LP dash D and I want to print to XLSX. And the name of the file 
So on Mac, most of the print commands from applications actually produce a, a picture of a PDF document, or PDF document as a picture, so it doesn't work with our text-only printers. Um, but printing from the command line does work, so that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so remember we've got our server running here on the left, and let's see what happens when I print on the right. So that's printed. This is listening on port 9100, and it didn't receive anything, and I didn't get any error messages. But that could be a Windows networking thing, that Windows networking has blocked port 9100 uh, coming from outside. So um, I can't see any messages coming from Windows. No, anyway, that should have worked. It worked when I tried it on Linux. It doesn't work here when I've tried it on, on Windows. Um, but I could run, I could run a server here on on Mac, and send it locally, um, and then that that, sh that would work as there. So if anyone wants me to spend more time on the Mac side, uh, just let me know, and I can get that working. But firewalls will will block your printing. So if you've got ninety port ninety one hundred blocked, uh, your printing won't get through. Okay. Okay, so what we want to do now is run a command line script to print all the Python scripts in um, in the online directory. Uh, and so to use do that, we're going to use these DOS commands um, for files that match ending in .py. So I'm not going to do the Python notebooks, just the Python scripts. Uh, so slash m for match asterisk.py slash c for run this command and the command is going to be uh, cmd slash c uh, print to my computer uh, print to xlsx the name of the printer and then at path and meanwhile my printer is going to be uh, running as a server an excel um, server so it will um, it will be able to process all those files as they come in. So this one is going to wait, get many connections. Every single file is going to get printed. And what we're planning to do is extract our YouTube URLs out of the file and put them all into a spreadsheet. So let's see if that works. Okay, this one here didn't work, so I'm just going to control C to, to, um, to stop it. And control C didn't stop it. So let's just close the window. So that's usually a sign of something to do with the firewall. So Activate my uh, what's the name of it? Activate. That's it. And then I'll run my server. Now I don't need to change into that directory to do this, so I can just um, do it from here. But I have to fully qualify file name and then the mode is my command line argument is going to be server dash xlsx so that's waiting um, for a connection and then uh, we'll get our our command from here which will for all the files um, 
that. I don't remember which. So paste is just control V. I should have known that. And let's try again. Control V. Control C. Control V. Ah. Should have said control V. Copy. Paste. All right, let's just type it. Slash M. Oh, in fact, I've got to get the right uh, computer name as well. And uh, my computer name is, I think I know it, it's desktop AB68, something like that. So we can get that out of settings. NVO, AB68, NVO. There you go. I thought I tested this, but obviously I haven't. Let's try PowerShell. There we go, so it works in PowerShell. And our printer here uh, didn't do much. And meanwhile over here, Let's um, let's get our virtual environment working again. Ah. Oh. There we go. That's why it's been working because I'm still on I'm on the Mac. And the virtual environment's still running over here. 
So um, what I want to do now is uh, run the Python. Now I've got to tell the um, the server to uh, save the Excel Excel file. So I've got another mode just for that, which is called save XLSX. Telling printer to save XLSX file. So this one here um, should have should have stopped. Okay, so we're not getting a lot of success here, uh, and the fact that control uh, control C worked. Uh, so we've got a log file we can look at. Ah, uh, yep, we got that. Let's have a look at the spreadsheet that got pr produced, and it's empty. Yep, so the printing of all the files uh, didn't come through. But that's all right because we can we can do that again. So it looks like everything's working there. And let's um, now that we're over here. that printed fine uh, we'll go into settings and have a look at our our printer queue uh, yeah, so we've got a something happening in the queue so these are all the things that have been tried to print to our virtual printer So let's just clear all of them. And we'll try running There we go. So that's um, we ran the mode to save the Excel file. Something might have happened that time, so let's give it a look. Ah, still nothing in there. And we'll have a look at the log file. Ah just got the last bit so we'll just try printing one document and see if um, because we're getting the, the the save XLSX is working um, Okay, Ones thinks there's a bug in server SLSX, but um, if, you, if you do find a bug, let me know. So the print command. 
slash d colon there so that printed it but we're not getting something there so I'm thinking there's something more likely happening with our printer as yes, he's got one in the queue and it could be that I've got two printers going to the same place because I created that extra printer So let's try printing to this one, print to BPA ML. Ah, there we go. So that worked. So it's because I've created this new printer, uh, the other printer is not working. And you would really only just um, have that problem because you've. Um, you, you would only have, have one printer set up. All right, so that worked. So let's do server XLSX. And this time on the, on the left, so there's our server running. And then over here, we're going to do all our files, but we're going to send them to the new printer I created tonight. And there we go. So it's processing them all on the left. As each one comes through, it's creating a different log file for each one. And then we'll run the command to say, save that Excel file that we've created. And so it saved it. And now let's look in our folder. And there's our links. And here we go, we've got every uh, meetup that I've done in the online session and we've got the YouTube URL in column B, we've got any Google Colab URLs in column C and we've got any meetup URLs in column D. Alright, so Elnaz has got an error. Let's have a look at line 97. All right, I'm going to open this in um, uh, PyCharm so I can get some line numbers. So I'll show you how to set up a new project in PyCharm. So let's call it Meetup. 110. Uh, now let's use um, a previously configured interpreter. And we'll find the one that we've created.
her. be available to all projects and we don't need that okay so it's created a, a project for us and we'll save our file from here save page as Uh, my line numbers don't match up with yours <laughs> uh, so we're looking for if uh, not in first okay so if you've got a um, an error in this line th that's because I've used um, a Python 3.8 code this is called the wal walrus operator so if um, if you're running Python 3.7 or earlier uh, then you'll have to change this uh, and what you change it to well you could just um, On the previous line, you just put m equals uh, pattern doc string dot match. Uh, so uh, pattern doc string is a regular expression. And then on this line, you just need m to say there's a map. So if um, if the word doc strings not in this uh, dictionary as a key and um, so that just means we've already we've already got it the first so the first this finds the first doc string the first um, title the first um, uh, YouTube URL um, so if it hasn't found the, f um, the first one then we can still put one in there um, and we set it to the first group uh, from this so we're matching a string that's got um, either starts with an F or an R it's got um, 0 or 2 um, 0 to 2 uh, characters there um, and then it's got either single quotes or double quotes and it's got three of them then it's got what the doc string actually is um, and then we don't need anything on the end of the line so it just grabs whatever that is, that first line, and puts that into the uh, the title. So let's have a look what uh, we've got here. So that's really looking like you're um, you're missing. You're not running Python 3.9. So um, I'm not sure what IDE you're using, but if you're using PyCharm, just go down into Terminal, <laughs> which I've got as PowerShell, and type Python version 3.9.5, or go into Python console. And when it, it'll start up, and it should tell you, and it hasn't. Sys dot version three point nine point five. So that's how you can check 
All right, and I've got a thing here about. this all right any other questions uh, good well, now has solved that uh, now did you find this uh, interesting uh, tonight what we've done we haven't really looked too closely at the code um, but if people are interested in that I can do that in future sessions uh, I think it's uh, like it's a it's a real-world example of uh, where you might use Python you've got all these files and you want to grab some information out of each one um, and uh, there was a novel way of doing it is using the, the print functionality to um, to get that data out. So Leo said he was coding along. Oh, that's good for Leo because he normally doesn't. He normally just watches. Uh, great, thanks, Elnaz. You like that? That was good. Okay, there were a few hiccups in the um, video tonight, but um, hopefully you pick something up from the uh, debugging that I was doing um, and just the way that you can debug these things. Uh, next week, um, we'll be getting more onto machine learning, so Arun's going to take next week's session and um, that's yeah I'll be taking the next one the, f the first week in September I'll do that and then um, uh, maybe one more session uh, during September I'll pro probably go through the code that we've done tonight Okay, so Leo watched the first part twice because it was confusing. <laughs> so um, was it uh, what I was presenting that confusing or the fact that the YouTube video stopped for I, I've got no idea why that stopped. Um, okay, well now it's just happy for me to go through the code next week. Uh, sorry, next time, next month. I'll do that. Okay, well thanks for watching and um, yeah, machine learning next next week or two um, with Arun. Catch you later.